what we're going to do today is this problem from the Hitler book. This is out of the Frames and Machines section in Chapter 6. So this is number 677. And it tells us in the problem that we've got this two-member structure. So here's a member, and then obviously here's a member. Um, it's connected at C right here by a pin. And that pin is fixed to this horizontal member, BDE. And there's a smooth slot here right there. So no friction there. And we want to find the horizontal and vertical components of reaction at the supports. So the supports would be E, A, and then at D. All right, so those are what are supporting those two members. So this is a frame problem. So the way we're going to solve this is we're going to break it up and we're going to look at the individual members and see if we can solve for everything we need. All right, so first let's do our free body diagram. And I'm just going to start with this horizontal member first. I'll just call it BE. Okay, so let's draw the member. So there's that. And then let's put the forces on here. All right, now obviously I've got this external force right here, the 500. So let's put that on here. And then this at D is a roller. So let's do the roller next. We'll go to C in just a second. All right, so the roller, obviously the, the element is just gonna push down on here. So the roller is gonna push it back up. So let's call this one DY. And then at E, there's a pin. So a pin is going to prevent translation in the X and the Y directions. So that means we're gonna have a force in the X direction. So let's just call it EX and then also in the y direction, so ey. And I'm just assuming the positive direction here. All right, so I don't know if those are positive or not. That's just what I'm going to assume at this point. Now let's look at c. So let's see what's happening here. All right, so we've got this. And let's think about what happens. So notice there is a moment here, right? And if we think about it, we have this smooth slot, so there's no friction. This pin at C is able to slide back and forth inside that slot, okay? So that means there won't be a force in that direction, but can the, the member here, can it move in this direction? No, right, because it's got that little pin there. The pin's holding it in place. So that means there has to be a force that is basically perpendicular to that slot, all right? So, you know, you can draw it this way or you can draw it going down, it doesn't matter. Um, but it needs to be in that direction because that is the direction of motion that's being prevented, right? So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna put it going down this way for this diagram. And again, I just pick that. Um, oh, let's take that off, we don't know that yet. Jumping ahead. So let's just call that C. And let's find this angle. All right, so what would that angle here be? Well, let's see. So basically I'm wanting that angle right there. So that angle is going to be 53.13. Um, and the way we know that is if we come over here, I know this length is three, right, from right there. And then I know this length is four from right here. Okay, so then I get that triangle. So we just get that three, four, Five triangle. This angle right here will be the arc tangent of four over three, like that. And then that is going to give us 53.13. Okay, now you might be thinking, well, how does this angle correspond to this? Well, the way I always do that is let's draw this out. So I always draw the XY frame and then I draw another one at an angle, and then I use this to kind of figure out where we are. So I know between the horizontal line and this line right here is 53.13. And then the next one, this one, would be 90 minus 53.13. And then this one here would have to be 53.13, because right here is 90 degrees, right? So that means that this angle is 53.13. All right, so hopefully that kind of makes sense there. And those are the only forces that we are gonna have. All right, so let's label our distances. So this will be three feet here. Got another three feet, 
and then two feet. All right, so that is our first diagram. Okay, so now let's do the diagram for this member right here. So we'll just call this AC. All right, so there's the member. And let's put our forces on here. So first of all, we've got this external moment, that couple moment, so that needs to be included. So 600 pound-feet. A is a pin, so with a pin, it's just preventing translation, right? So I could rotate about an axis going through the pin, like if there's an axis coming out of the pin, we could rotate about it. So there's no moment created there, but we do have the X and the Y components. So let's call them AY and AX. Again, I just assumed the positive direction here. All right, I'm not gonna sit and try to figure out if it's positive or negative. Let's just assume they're positive. And then what is the only other force left to put on here? Well, we got C, right? So we need to include C. Now, I already have C on this diagram. And due to Newton's third law, remember we have to have equal and opposite reaction. So if this one is going down this way, that means on this diagram, C will be going in the opposite direction, right? And then we've got that 53.13 degree angle right there, okay? So now we've got that, um, and that would be our diagram there. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at your completed diagrams, and you're gonna see if you have enough to solve for what you need. All right, so I want the horizontal and vertical components of reactions at the supports. So I want to find AX, AY, DY, EX, and EY. All right, that's what I'm looking for. So how many unknowns is that? It's five unknowns. Okay, so if there's five unknowns, I get three equations per free body diagram. Right, because I have x, y, and the moment equilibrium equations. So I get a total of six equations. So I only have five unknowns. I can get six equations. So I have enough to solve. So what we want to do is start with the diagram with the fewest unknowns. So that's going to be this one, right? Because this one has three unknowns, whereas this one has four, right? Because we get one, two, three, four. So we want to start with this one first. And then, let's just call this number one. And then once we get AX, AY, and C, I can use the C value over in this diagram. And then we're left with three unknowns there. All right, so let's focus in on this diagram. And then we'll move to that other one. All right, so let's go ahead and let's just do, um, let's do our moment equation first. I think that would be good. So let's do moment about A. And I'm taking the moment about A because if I pick A, then AX and AY go right through that point, right? So I don't have to worry about um, those forces creating a moment. All right, counterclockwise is going to be positive. All right, now let me, let's put some dimensions on here. I didn't put them on here before. So this length here is three feet. That length there is four. Okay, so now we've got this right here. So we've got the force. Now you can do this in a couple of ways. We could find this distance right here if we wanted. That would be a perpendicular distance. Or we can break this up into the X and Y components. I'm going to break it up into the X and Y components just because that's usually what I do. Um, I think it's easier to see. So let's look at the CY component. So that would be C cosine 53.13. And then the X component, that one would be C sine 53.13, right? All right, my camera is going out of focus there for some reason. Okay, so now I've got these two components. So now let's go ahead and do the moment. So if I look at the CX component first, right, we know the force component is C sine 53.13. And then the distance, the perpendicular distance we need, 
between this point C and A is going to be the 4 feet, right? Because if I move this all the way down that 4 feet, it's going to go right through A. So the distance there would be 4 feet. And then I need to see if it's positive or negative. Well, we can look at this and see. So I'm taking a moment about this point A, and I've got a force going this way. So that's going to be counterclockwise, which is positive. All right. And then let's go ahead and do the CY component. So the force is C cosine 53.13. And then that distance is going to be the 3 feet. Because if I have the force here and I move it over 3 feet, it goes through A. So there's 3 feet. And then we need to see if it's positive or negative. Okay, So that one is going to be positive also. Because if I were to take this and try to pull up, the only way it's going to rotate is counterclockwise, which is positive. All right, now are we done with that equation? No, we're not done with it yet, right? We have this 600. That has to be included somewhere. So this is already a moment, right? It's a couple moments. So we need to put this in here. It's going clockwise. So we're going to subtract 600. And then we're done with the moment, so we can set it equal to 0. So now with this, once you simplify, you can go ahead and solve for C. All right, so C then will be a positive 120 pounds. And it's positive, so that means the direction we assumed here was correct. Okay, so now let's go to the X direction. So now we're just going to look at the X components of force. So I've got a positive AY, or not AY, AX, and then I've got a negative C sine 53.13. Now I already know what C is though, right? It's 120. So let's plug that in. Set that equal to zero, and then we can get AX. AX then will be a positive 96 pounds. All right, and then one more we need from here. We need AY. So look at, let's look at the Y components. I've got a positive AY, and then I've got this positive C cosine 53.13, where C is 120. Set it equal to zero. Then we can solve, get AY, and that's going to be 72 pounds. All right, so these both being positive means that we chose the right directions over here. Okay, because remember, I just assumed these directions. Since they're positive, we assume the correct direction. Okay, so now we've got this done. So what we need to do next is go to our other diagram and we can use this C value, and then we'll be able to solve for EX, EY, and DY. So let's slide this back up here. All right, so C is the 120, all right? And then let's go ahead and work through this one. Oh, let's see, let's do a moment equation about point E first, because that will allow us to solve for DY. So a lot of the times on these problems, the moment equation, if you do it first, it's going to be easier because you can actually solve for a value. Okay, so we're taking the moment about this point. I've got a moment created by 500. Now that one is going to be a positive moment because it goes counterclockwise, right? So we're going to have positive 500. And then the distance will be from here to here. So 6 plus 2, which is 8. And then let's look at C. All right. So this one, again, I'm going to break it into components. I've got this Y component, and then I've got the X component. All right. So this would be C cosine 53.13, and this right here would be C sine 53.13. Let's look at the Y component. So for this one, we've got a force pushing down. So it's counterclockwise. It's positive. And then the force would be C cosine 53.13. We already know C is 120, though. 
And then the distance is going to be from here to here. All right, so 5. Okay. And again, the way I always look for that distance is the easy way, I think, is if we have the force here, what's the distance we need to move in a perpendicular fashion that gets us to go through point E? So that's going to be a distance of 5. Okay, so we got that. And then what about this X component? Well, we aren't given like a thickness or anything of this member. So we're going to assume that this force goes right through point E. So that means there won't be a moment, right? Because there is no moment arm. So no moment created by this one. But what about dy? That one does create a moment, right? And the sign is going to be negative because if we push up right here, rotates clockwise. So that is a negative moment. So we'll have negative dy, and then the distance is the 2. OK, set it to 0. All right, so now we've got that. And we can solve. So dy is going to be 2,180 pounds. All right. So that's another thing we were wanting. Positive means we assume the correct direction, which makes sense if that's a roller. And last two things we need to find are EX and EY. All right, so here is the X equation. So I've got EX, we assumed positive, and then I've got this X component of that C force. So that's going to be C sine 53.13. And C was 120, so plug that in. And then that's all we have for this equation here. All right, set it to 0 and solve for EX, which gives us 96 pounds. All right, and notice this one should be negative, right? I almost forgot the negative. Because when I take this and move it over, it becomes negative. So let's put that as negative. So that means this one, since it's negative, when I assume positive here, I chose the wrong direction. Okay, And that would make sense because if this force here is going to the right, then the force here at E in the x direction needs to counteract it. So it needs to go to the left to balance that out. All right, so this one should be negative 96 pounds. And then let's look at the y direction. Okay. So for y, we've got positive ey plus dy, which is 2180. And then we've got the negative y component of c. So we get negative c cosine 53.13. c is 120. And then we have a negative 500. Set that equal to 0. OK, and then this one, you can solve for EY. And EY will be a negative number. It's negative 1,608 pounds. So again, the negative means we chose the wrong direction in our diagram. But we're not going to switch our diagram, right? We're going to leave it alone because this diagram corresponds to these negative numbers. So everything is good with your diagram even though these are negative. So just leave everything as it is. And there you go. So we went through and we found all of the supports. And that's how you would go about doing a frame problem. So you just split it up, look at the diagrams uh, for each member, and then do your equilibrium equations. All right. I hope you all have a good rest of the day. I will see you all next time.